always ready for that. Makes sense. Makes sense. Did you show me that picture of the rows of rows of pavilion ducks in the field? It sounds like it. Um, We're, we're spread now. All right, third base, first base, we're all good. We'll call the meeting to order for the regular council meeting of Tuesday, November 20th. May I have a roll call, please? Council Member Harlan. Here. Council Member Bottorf. Here. Mayor Termini. Here. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everyone. Tonight's meeting is being cablecast live on Charter Communications Cable TV Channel 8 and will be rebroadcast on Saturday on Charter Channel 71 and Comcast Channel 25. As usual, Lynn Dutton is our producer back there. And we will move on to presentations. I'm sure a moment many of us have been looking forward to. I'd like to invite uh, Eddie Ray Garcia up to the front. Okay, there's your mark. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Sorry. Here we go. I, I'm not going to say anything about your good side. Well, honoring Eddie Ray Garcia upon his retirement on more than 30 years of service to the city of Capitola, whereas Eddie Ray Garcia joined the staff of the city of Capitola on October 31st, 1988 as a park maintenance worker, was promoted to street supervisor in 1995, and was again promoted to maintenance superintendent in 2012. He will officially retire on December 31st, 2018, after more than 30 years of outstanding and meritorious service to the residents of Capitola. And whereas Eddie Ray has done an outstanding job of leading the public works maintenance crews for the past 23 years, he has ensured the safety of the crew, trained the crew, 
and led by example by stepping up and working side by side with the crew. And whereas Eddie Ray has been an invaluable member of the public works team in responding to disasters, both large and small, and keeping the city streets, facilities, and parks safe and secure. And whereas during his tenure, he has worked to ensure the success of 30 Wharf to Wharf races, 30 art and wine festivals, and numerous other events. Whereas Eddie Ray is widely recognized by business owners and residents throughout the city for his tireless devotion to the well-being of Capitola. And whereas his dedication was honored on September 2002 with a recognition of excellence from the city of Capitola for his work on coordinating the Begonia Festival, both as a city employee and as a volunteer, and again in May 2004 as the Chamber of Commerce Man of the Year. Whereas in 2002, he helped develop the city's mission, vision, and value statement. Now, therefore, I, Michael Termini, Mayor of the City of Capitola, on behalf of the City Council, City staff, and the entire Capitola community, do hereby commend and thank Eddie Ray Garcia for three decades of excellent and dedicated service. Thank you. Uh, is it too late to change my mind? <laughs> yes. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate everything that the city of Capitola has done for me. It's given me an opportunity to work here. It's given me an opportunity to meet and become friends with many people here. And uh, I can't thank, thank them enough. So thank you very much. Very I also would like to recognize my lovely wife, Julia, for everything Woo! she's And I have to say, I don't know if we could pull off a Begonia Festival without you. Sure. You're amazing. I don't know if we could do an art and wine festival without you. You are the go-to guy. Whenever something has to be done, no one ever doubts that you call Eddie and it just happens. It is, you are truly a marvel. Excellent. And, and, and if you get bored, I have two or three committees that you can sit on <laughs> tomorrow. It's no problem. <laughs> I always, tell I always tell everybody, we all have a shelf life, and I've reached mine, so <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Eddie. All right, thank First you. class, appreciate it. <laughs> okay, we'll go on to report on closed session. Thank you, uh, Mayor Termini. Uh, tonight, uh, the three of you, uh, Council Member Harlan, Council Member Botorf, and uh, Mayor Termini met in closed session with the city manager and myself. We had one item of uh, anticipated litigation on the council agenda tonight. We gave the council a status report on that item and the council took no reportable action in closed session. Thank you. And let the record show that Council Member Bertrand has arrived. Welcome Jacques, good Thank to you. see you. Okay. Um, are there any additions or deletions to the agenda or additional material? We received one public comment item for uh, 9C. Very good. Um, we go on to the public comment portion of tonight's meeting. Anyone in the audience who would like to approach and address the council on items not on tonight's agenda, step forward. Karin Hanna, the famous Karin Hanna. Oh, please. <laughs> good evening. Um, Everybody's left, but I just, I wanted to say what a great job Eddie Ray's always done and how excited we are about Matt, who I think is gonna be stepping up and taking really? on those responsibilities, but he's been doing an awesome job and interacting really well with the village. So I see that his excellent example is going to uh, carry forward, so I'm pretty excited about that. The crew has been doing an, a wonderful job uh, working with the merchants decorating the village, and uh, and also Triad Electric is gonna step up and help a little bit. So I think it's gonna look really awesome. So I wanna invite everybody to the tree lighting ceremony, um, which is going to be Saturday afternoon after the Surfing Santa event, 
And uh, so the tree lighting will be about five o'clock. There'll be some caroling. Um, we're gonna have a band in the afternoon. There'll be a lot of fun things with, along with Surfing Santa. So that event is gonna be a little bit better, including a lot of um, giveaways of some gift certificates and things. So even if you don't have kids to come down to bring down to Santa, we really encourage everybody to come down anyway because it's an adorable event. Um, uh, and I think there are going to be a lot of little extras this year to make it fun. And then everybody's welcome to come down and carol um, at the tree lighting at 5 o'clock. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Karin. And if you haven't visited and seen the Surfing Santa, take some time and watch. We have the best Santa Claus in the world. Step right up. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jay Brown. I just moved here a year ago from San Diego, California. I live in the village now. Kristen is actually my next door neighbor. And so I'm here because uh, I recently met one of the owners of uh, one of the stores here, Capitola Reef. His name is mm -hmm. Devin. And Devin and I uh, got to talking, got into deep conversation, and he was vulnerable with me in sharing his bout with anxiety. Um, as well as other emotional things going on for him. And so I just happen to be in the field of human optimiz optimization. I'm an expert in that field. I train uh, corporate executives, athletes, and entertainers and help them with dealing with their stress, overwhelm, and physical uh, ailments as well. And so what I propose to, to Devin is uh, I could work with him and have since done so, begun uh, working with him. And then he shared with me that within the village during this time of year, uh, business tends to slow down. Um, I, as I understand, it's a vacation town, so it makes uh, a lot of sense. And as a result, the owners um, that have been speaking with Devin have shared how they have also uh, some anxiety and stress during this time of year, as most of us do, right, during the holidays. And so we are doing an event on November 30th at Capitola Reef. And the purpose and intention of the event is to share certain techniques and tools that are available to basically any human being that can help them through their stressful times. All very natural alternative um, modalities is what we're gonna share there, as well as um, cannabidiol CBD. We're gonna be selling it uh, now at Capitola Reef. Uh, as I know to this day, there's not another uh, place in, in the village here that uh, offers any type of CBD. So we are presenting an opportunity for people to come join us on November 30th, learn these techniques, uh, sample some of the CBD that we have uh, available that we're gonna be offering there. And uh, thank you for having me. Very good, and I'm sure you'll want to um, confer with our chief of police in the back to make sure that the sale of CBD at the reef um, is keeping on the right side of the law. Absolutely, I, I, you know, in, in all honor and respect to everyone, the city, um, you know, the, um, the citizens here uh, will have the conversations that I know we need to have in order to make sure that everyone is, is safe and taken care Great. of. Great, and yeah. thanks for taking care of my friend Devin. He's a great guy. I love him. Yeah. Thank you. Big heart. Thank you. Anyone else would like to address the council? Seeing none, we'll bring it back for council comments. Stephanie. We have a group in town that's called the Friends of the Capitola Library that we started a couple years ago to support the library and uh, encourage um, community activities at the library. And so we have a really nice committee if anybody is interested in joining the Friends. And the Friends also is raising some good amount of money for the new library so we can have a few extra things and it's not the kind of money that the other fundraising <laughs> committee is raising but we're trying to help wh however we can. We have free space at the mall. We did have a space right in the front next to Starbucks, the front entrance, but they're another, they, got, they leased that. So we've moved down on the, the, uh, across from the Capitola Police um, Office um, on the way to Target. So if you haven't been in the mall, you don't wanna get anything else in the mall, come in and at least buy some good used books and CDs and other things. Do dollar for a paperback, $2 for hardbacks. We have a wonderful selection. People also are bringing us boxes of books and bags of books all the time. So we have, I think, one member who has close to 100 boxes in her garage. But we need more because we're gonna be staffed more between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Right now we're open Thursday, Friday, 
Friday, Saturday, Sunday from 11, 12 to 5, 4 or 5-ish. But we're going to try to add some more days, Thursday and Wednesday and whatever days we find volunteers to work there. So please come and support the library. Get some Christmas presents there for your friends. Chuck. Uh, I can attest the uh, bargains are pretty good. So um, Stephanie and I are going to do a presentation here before the City Council um, covering some of the senior issues that are in this community. And the one that I'll talk about right now is um, senior loneliness. So we're going to do that later. Yeah, we're going to do that later. I just want to let the, let the public know that that's one of the ones we're going to cover. Thank you. Ed. As I was preparing for this uh, meeting tonight with things on the agenda, uh, I began reminiscing um, a little bit. And I realized um, I've been on the city council for six years. And the entire time I've been here, I've shared this position with Stephanie Harlan and Mike Termini. And I kind of dawned on me that this will be the last time the three of us will be deciding what happens in the city of Capitola. And I, it was kind of a special moment. And I just uh, I, I reflect on a couple things. I know that a couple times I've told people I live in Capitola, and one of the questions they ask is, is Mike Termini still the mayor there? So there's a perception <laughs> that he's always the mayor. So uh, it's fitting that tonight he's uh, closing out this meeting as the mayor. And with Stephanie, I know, Stephanie, one thing always matters to you is you always are concerned and hopeful that the city council votes unanimously. So it's my hope that at least one time tonight we can vote unanimously. So <laughs> It'll happen. And um, I will tell you that there was one moment about, oh, two, two or three years ago when I was walking through the village with um, Dennis Norton, who was the mayor at the time. And someone came up and introduced themselves to us and, and shook my hand and addressed me as the mayor. And as that person left, Dennis looked at me and he goes, you're always the mayor. You're just <laughs> always the mayor. This last week, I had the pleasure of presiding over a really momentous event, and that was the groundbreaking for our library. We brought 40 or 45 chairs, and 150 people showed up. It was standing room only. It was amazing. Our major donors were there. Uh, library patrons were there. The library staff was there. It was really a feel-good moment. And three days later, our old library disappeared. It took exactly one day for that library to go away. And now the, uh, the hard work begins, but I'm really excited about it. Let us move on to um, our consent agenda. These are items taken with a single vote unless someone from the audience or someone on the council would like to pull an item. What's your pleasure, council? Adopt the consent agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We'll move on to general government public hearings. First item, approve a contract with the City of Santa Cruz for Beach Lifeguard Services. Mr. City Manager, are you giving the report on this? Our chief no. is coming up. No? Maybe. I, I think I can cover it here. If, if I know we're expecting like several chiefs to uh, fill the room. We have a couple of them. <laughs> we're lousy with chiefs tonight. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, uh, this evening on your agenda is a contract, an extension of a contract with Santa Cruz Marine Safety for one year to continue lifeguard tower services on Capitola Beach. Uh, you'll recall that we entered in, first entered into a contract with Santa Cruz Marine Safety in 2012. They've pro been providing tower services on Capitola Beach ever since. Uh, most recently, we had a three-year contract with them, which was for just under $75,000 a year. It ended up being a flat contract for three years, and that ended in 2018. Um, We've proposed a one-year contract. We've negotiated some changes. Uh, there's obviously an increase in cost due to some extra hours we've added into the contract. In addition, obviously, the costs have risen for Santa Cruz Fire to provide those services. Um, this is a one-year contract. We have also been in conversations with central fire protection districts about a potential transfer to them where they would provide uh, beach lifeguards on our beach. And in addition, we're hoping this summer that they can provide junior lifeguard instructor training services. So we've been working with them and this regional statewide uh, junior guard uh, lifeguard association to make sure that that works out. So with that, um, I'm available for any questions. And I know we have both Chief Hall and Chief Frawley here in the audience if uh, you'd like to ask them any questions as well. Council, questions of staff? Um, Larry, could I ha have you come up here and adjust the, the microphone? We're getting some feedback for some reason. Feedback. Question. Yes, a okay. question from Jock. Um, so in terms of um, our getting an idea with um, Central, 
how they're going to work with um, the Marine at San, uh, Santa Cruz. How's that going to work out? How's that uh, interaction going to work? So I've met with both Chief Hall individually and Chief Hall and Chief Frawley, and we've talked about, uh, I'll have Chief Frawley maybe chime in a little bit, but we've been talking about a potential process this winter where Central potentially shadows Santa Cruz Marine Safety during the off season uh, and sort of learns the ropes so that come a year from now when it comes time to begin to prepare to fully staff and operate the lifeguard program that Central is ready to roll. Yeah, that's why I'm interested. Chief Welcome, Hall. Chief. Um, yeah. Thank you, Mayor, members of Council, Jim Frawley, Santa Cruz Fire Chief. And first, I'd just like to say that we are always um, honored and grateful to be able to provide lifeguard services to the city of Capitola. I think we've had a great relationship over the last six to seven years and look forward to next year. We always stand ready to help protect uh, the beaches here within Capitola and all throughout Santa Cruz County. And I know that Chief Hall echoes those same sentiments, but I'll let him speak on his own. Uh, we this year, I, I know that it's been um, uh, an interesting conversation, let's say, with regards to the junior guards and the protection of the lifeguard services for the beach. And, and we've been working together very closely to, to come to, uh, to find a good resolution. And I think that I think the city manager as well as Chief Hall are, are working very diligently and effectively towards that solution. Um, what the city of Santa Cruz and the Marine Safety Division can provide is that that experienced training, the opportunity for shadow, the opportunity for support, and we've, we, we stand ready to do that all of this year. Um, I made that offer personally to both the city manager as well as to Chief Hall, and, and we'll see how that uh, transitions. I, I am hopeful, I expect good things, and so that's, I, I, I'm here to help support sort of the question as well as the effort. And I will now turn it over to Chief Hall if he would like to speak. Chief Raleigh, let me just let me just say while you're up here, you know, since 2012, this has been a this has been a win-win for the city of Capitola and I believe for Santa Cruz. And your people have performed ad not beyond admirably. I, I couldn't can't say enough good things about it. Thank you very much. Oh, I appreciate that, and we'll, like I said, we'll always be here to make sure that the beaches are safe. Chief, welcome. Good evening, Mayor, members of the council. Oh, you know, you want to catch your breath? I know you ran over here. <laughs> it was a pretty, it was a quick one. I, I'm on a whirlwind this evening. I've actually got a board meeting going right now as well. So, uh, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity uh, to speak this evening on the Marine Safety Division and and the the lifeguard services. I believe the city of Santa Cruz has done a great service, as you mentioned, to Capitola. Uh, we believe we've got some big shoes to fill, but we also believe that we're up for the challenge. We have staff that are ready to come in. Uh, we have staff that are ready to shadow the city of Santa Cruz between now and, and uh, next summer, or next season, I should say, and then uh, plan on taking over the reins in, in 2020. So we know that there are some hoops to jump, and we know that there are rules and regulations that need to be followed, and we're prepared to do that. And again, through the guidance and tutelage of uh, the city of Santa Cruz, we believe that uh, we can provide that service for you and, and looking forward to the partnership. Any questions, Jacques? Um, I'd like to say I'm glad you've stepped forward and I'm glad of the cooperation with Santa Cruz. And you're, you are right, there's big shoes to <laughs> fill there. But more than that, I'm really happy that your unit you know, is willing to step forward and, and fill that Thank you. for us. I, I really appreciate that. Any other questions? Anyone from the public like to address the council? Seeing none, we'll bring it back. Ed? Yeah, I, I want to echo the sentiments of the mayor. Chief Rawley, I want to thank you and your department for the excellent service you provided for us. Uh, I've talked many times with the people out there. They're excellent quality service. And uh, I applaud you for wanting to go ahead and help us any way you can to take over this program and, and also encourage Chief Hall to work diligently to provide service here. I think it's a great situation. And with that, I'll make a motion to adopt staff recommendation. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. There's your unanimous vote, Ed. We're going to keep rolling here. One Two in a row. Two in a row. <coughs> Thank you, <coughs> fire fighting professionals and beach lifeguard professionals. Chief, chief, chief. Only two. No, there's three back there. Oh, okay. Okay. Only two fire chiefs. Let's go on to reviewing a recommendation uh, for junior guard fees. We have our recreation department manager in front of us. Welcome. 
So this or is the city manager going to jump in? And uh, no, I'm, I'm okay. Nikki is going to take over this presentation. This is Nikki Bryan. I introduced her at a recent meeting. She's our new recreation supervisor, and she's going to be presenting this evening about junior guard and camp fees for this coming summer. Hi, Nikki. Uh, Mr. Mayor, council members, good evening. Um, so as uh, Jamie says, I'm here to talk about our um, fee schedule for, ca for Camp Capitola and junior guard. Um, so... Camp Capitola, the last time those fees were increased was in 2012. Um, for Junior Guard, it was uh, 2016. And in that time, um, a lot has changed, particularly the minimum wage. The state of California has implemented an, uh, a regular increase in minimum wage to the point that we will be at $12 per hour for the next summer season. It will take effect um, in January of this coming year. Um, the consumer price index has increased almost 20% um, over that period, um, as well as um, it compared to other um, similar type programs, junior guard programs, as well as other similar day camp programs. Um, we are uh, at a lower percentage. Our fees are at a lower percentage than um, compared to those programs. So. Uh, what I'd like to propose is that for this upcoming season that we increase for Camp Capitola, this, um, increase fees so that for a two-week all-day session, um, the resident fee would increase to $278 and the non-resident fee would increase to $325. Um, for a half-day program, which is often um, purchased by individuals that are participating in Junior Guard, because Junior Guard takes place on either a morning session or an afternoon session. So um, individuals that participate in Junior Guard oftentimes choose half-day Camp Capitola as well. So this would be um, relevant for the for next slide. So half-day proposed fee would increase to 140. Um, for resident, 187 for non-resident, and then the extended care, so the hour before ca uh, camp and the hour after camp um, at a proposed fee of $50. I'm also interested in um, a one-week session so that we might be able to pilot a team program. Uh, currently, Camp Capitola offers programs, and typically uh, that age range is from about 9 to 11 and definitely more on the younger age range. And uh, there's definitely a lot of interest in having more team programs offered. So to pilot a team program for those proposed fees, uh, 250 for resident, 339 for a one week session. Uh, for the junior guard proposed fees, um, to increase a proposed fee for the half day, remember it's a half day, four week session, uh, 250 for resident, 314 for non-resident, uh, which for those that do half day Camp Capitola, they would also potentially purchase the transport fee that would be increased to potentially $55. So the overall impact is that this would be able to um, provide an opportunity for Camp Capitola to have a complete package service. Um, so that when pr parents and families sign up for um, Camp Capitola, they would have field trips that would include transportation all in that one purchase price. Uh, junior Guard would be able to have an enhanced um, ratio, staff ratio as a result of um, as a result of this increase, and we would ultimately be able to offset um, a lot of the incurred costs that have happened over with the minimum wage increase with just the general economy. Um, and the fiscal impacts that for Camp Capitola, these fee increases would approximately generate 45,000 um, per year, and for Junior Guard, um, it would approximately 5,000 per year. So I am available for questions at this time. Um, can you tell me, or do you have a slide, or do you know the numbers on how we now compare with, our, with the proposed increased rates to other programs? Um, that <clears throat> if we adopt the proposed fees, how that would compare? Right. Do, are we in parity? Or are we still a little bit lower? Or? So um, for day camps in general, it's hard to, because there's a whole range. <laughs> you could find 
uh, day camps at Camp Kennelan that would cost $500 per week. Um, or you could look at other recreation programs and we would be pretty on par. Um, difference would be minimal. I couldn't give you an exact percentage. Uh, and then for the Junior Guard program, again, the immediate surrounding areas, the price is almost exact to very, very similar. Because we seem to be relatively low compared to those two based yeah. on the first slide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. And, and we've had members of the public say, you know, you should maybe think about this. So it, it's, um, it, it, it's definitely going to not seem any different than what is immediately surrounding. And as a side note, you know, the Capitola Foundation offers scholarships to yeah. families that cannot afford this, so there is an avenue. Uh, questions of staff? Jacques? Transport is basically walking down the kids, right? Yeah, so it is during that kind of lunch break, mm -hmm. um, staff actually on both ends, uh, because there could be a morning session at Junior Guards that are moving up to the Recreation Center mm -hmm. to participate in Camp Capitola, and so they kind of do a swap. Okay. So there are staff that help escort those youth and kind of do a swap in the middle, and then they go to their um, new new afternoon or morning program. Yeah, that was the same for my daughter. I just want to make sure. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Ed, can you go back a slide? Yeah. Two slides. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So I'm concerned. It, look, it seems like there's a the percentage of change. It looks like it's across the board. There seems to be some kind of balance except for the 3% increase. And I'm wondering why only 3%. It seems like an insignificant amount and it's not. For the half day? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, that is because in if you are a junior guard participant and you are participating in half day camp capitola um, your fee suddenly becomes compounded so you're you're paying your junior guard fee and then you're again paying the half day fee and then um, the transport fee so looking at them collectively um, the, it was intentionally kept at a lower price because all of those the fees other increases paid together. okay thanks for that explanation mm -hmm. Great. Would anyone from the public like to address the council on this item? Seeing none, I'll bring it back. I'll move that we adopt the recommended fees and include them in the amended fiscal year 2018-2019 fee schedule in item 9E. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Three in a row. The next item, we'll hear from Larry Laurent regarding a beach public art project. Of course, if the city manager would like to do it. No, no, so I, I <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so um, we're here to talk about a, um, a new proposed public art project. Um, it's just a reminder of what the public art program is. Um, it's, first of all, it's great art, as we can see by the last three projects, including the new sea lion sculpture. Um, it was begun in 2004, but the key thing is, is that commercial projects over 250,000 contribute to this fund. We have the op they have the option of either paying 2% uh, of their valuation for on-site art or contribute 1% to the public art fund. As of this time, no one has done it on-site. They've contributed to this fund. Currently, with even after all the, the new public art, we have about a $200,000 balance. Um, the public art budget this year is $80,000. Um, and just a reminder, this the public art funds are restricted in use. They can only be used for public art. Um, the Art and Cultural Commission uh, recommends public art projects to the City Council. Um, the piece of art we're looking at today, the two piece, is, is a, um, trying to define it, it's a sea life, kind of a, a three-dimensional relief um, in the shape of a, kind of a buoy um, Ed Krupa is the artist who is proposing this. Uh, Mr. Krupa actually um, submitted a uh, proposal for the, uh, the climbing sculpture. The Art and Culture Commission loved the piece of work. They just did not feel that was the best um, place for it because, as you'll see, it is a very much a three-dimensional um, with, with, with places for, you know, if you're climbing it, there, there could be some injuries. But the, the commission really had a strong interest in finding another place for the, these art due to the, the nature of the art, which is sea life in general. Um, and as far as the, 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 um, the, the, the strong interest in, in the three dimension of it. Um, the commission um, in May met and, they've, and the commission voted seven to one to recommend the installation of the, the starfish and crab design to the city council. 
Um, so these are existing examples of both the crab and the, the uh, uh, starfish um, example. This is in Tacoma, Washington. This is a, an example of, of how it would look. It's not, obviously not exact, um, you know, superimposing, but it would go on top of those, I'm trying to think of the proper term, but this, the round cement um, entrance points to, to the beach. Um, they would kind of form an entry to, to the beach. The uh, commission, um, due to the, especially with the new um, sea line, they, they, they decided they didn't want it right next to the, the Esplanade Park. So the, the example location is the entrance, um, kind of the center of the beach, right where the, uh, the crosswalk is. So the, the, you, you can see right now there are, there are things around there and it, these, these um, um, sea balls would sit on top of the, those entrance points. The proposed budget for the, the project, which includes those two, the, the crab and the starfish, is $30,000. The artist will assist and work with Public Works on the installation of the project. Um, I'm now available for any questions. Council. Questions, Stephanie? Is it uh, going to be glued or nailed or somehow <laughs> attached to the wall so it won't get stolen like our doll? Yeah. Our, it it our will be. A, it, other ones? I'm trying to remember. It will be mounted si in a similar structure to the the sea lion. It is going to be bolted in. Um, I forgot the exact way that he recommended, but it will be attached securely to 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 that. It will be very very difficult. And to do get. you envision? Children climbing on it, and no, even falling or anything. No, or? that is not. Th that's. I don't believe that's the intent of this. This is for touching, for sure. Um, if you look at the the depth, you can you can kind of fall, but not climbing on. And you put the artist's name on it also in a plaque. Um, we we are hopefully going to be doing that. We're going to be do. We're actually. In, I'm in the process of doing that for the uh, the sea lion as well. But yes, there we be should definitely acknowledge yeah, the yes, artist. Absolutely. No, we we're definitely going to be part of what. This we're is doing. a side question. Do you have any plans to do a mural on the Upper Capitola? Avenue uh, side where the new houses went in on the right at Hill Street in Capitola? Um, it's not a, it's a private wall and the Art and Cultural Commission has spoken about that a lot, but we have to approach the property owners and get their permission because it's not, it's not really a public Yeah, that would keep surface. going on that because I hate to see it graffitied. Yeah, but uh, yeah, good. Thanks. Jock? Yeah, I, you know, when I sit down there, <laughs> I notice a lot of kids walking along the wall and then at that little spot that this art piece will be, they enjoy sitting there. So it's going to take away from that, and or a lot of kids are going to want to climb on it too, so that could be an issue. And what material is this? It, it's bronze. Ed? I have no questions. Okay, we'll open it up to the public. Anyone who would like to address the council on this item? Seeing none, we'll bring it back. Ed? <coughs> I've never voted against an art project. Good. But I have trouble with this one. Okay. Um, for the reasons that were mentioned, I, I, I love the advice of the assistant to the city manager, but I do believe this will become a climbing object in that location. I think that that entire wall is a climbing wall. People sit on it, kids run on it. Um, I love the art. Uh, I would like to see us find a better place to put the art. And I don't think that anywhere on that wall is appropriate. Uh, I, I looked. I went down today and looked at it. It's just, I think it'll be a nuisance there. I think that they're beautiful. Um, I don't know that I have an idea. I always I kick it back to the art commission to come up with an alternative location. But my thoughts on that are that I don't think it's appropriate in that area. And uh, I, I might bring to your attention that the art commission did think of this, and we queried the artist and public works, and they. They can be tried there and they can be moved. It doesn't have to be there in perpetuity, unlike our, you I think we, we, can, we, we could say that our seals. We built a parking lot uh, five years ago and it's still there. And I, 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 I'm just saying, I, I, I'd be interested to see what other city council people think, but my okay. opinion is, is that I don't think that, I love the art, I love the idea of, of what they are and what they represent. Um, I could think of a couple places that we could put them, but I'd rather kick it back to the Art Commission to say find an, uh, something more suitable than the Esplanade wall. Stephanie? I agree. You don't like it there either? What about you, Jacques? Well, I, I brought up the idea that kids use that whole thing for walking around. That's my concern too. So I'd like to make a motion that we kick it back to the uh, Art Commission to find an alternative location not on the Esplanade wall. Second. Okay. Um, let's take a roll call vote. Councilmember Harlan? Aye. Councilmember Bertrand? Aye. 
Councilmember Botworth? Aye. Mayor Termini? No, I just wanted to ruin your perfect score tonight. That's all. Okay, that's who you are. <laughs> I mean, first of all, I'd like to compliment the art and culture. You know, this is great. great. I, I like the idea in general. Okay. Yeah, on, on just one other added comment. It's just, you know, on, on a personal note, um, I, like I said, I've never gone against any of the art projects in town, but, uh, and, I, and the ones that we have are absolutely gorgeous, but I would really wish that we could maybe try to find some California artists or local artists and not focus our money in Oregon and Washington. We don't focus it, trust me. I, I, I just, as it was a general uh -huh. comment that I just would love to see our money spent more locally. Yeah. It, we, I wish we had more. I understand. We do focus on the, on the West Coast because we found that especially in sculpture, it's a really narrow field. Uh, let's move on to the next item. Uh, consider a resolution dissolving the public library, uh, the library advisory committee. Sorry. Mr. Mayor, members of the council. So the library advisory committee was formed in 2015 uh, and has been meeting to help advise the city on the development of the Capitola Branch Library and other library related issues. We've also formed, I think it was in 2017, we formed a library ad hoc design committee that's been charged with helping to design and make design decisions that were maybe between city council and staff and it's sort of a higher level than staff was felt comfortable making uh, regarding what we were gonna do at the new library. In addition, the city of Capitola appoints now to a regional library commission. Uh, we will have a new appointment as I believe our prior appointment, Barbara Gorson has resigned as of uh, this year. So the library advisory committee, frankly, over the last several months this past year has held relative, oh, and also the Capitola Friends have become a very active organization. And so there's a lot of cross membership between these various bodies. And I think it was frankly a bit of meeting fatigue. Um, a lot of the members who were on the library advisory committee were members of a lot of other committees and were feeling like we were just going to library meetings all the time. We canceled a number of meetings this year. And so this year, actually our last meeting, we, we attempted to meet to talk about whether or not there was value in continuing the library advisory committee. We didn't get a quorum, um, but those members who were in attendance had all been with the committee from the beginning, and the consensus of the group was that it was probably this committee's time had come and gone, and it was probably a good time to dissolve the committee. Um, with that, I'm available for questions, and I know Councilmember Termini has sat on the committee since day one, and you may have opinions about this as well. I, I think this committee has served its purpose <coughs> and has done well, and I would point out that our, our former chair, Barbara Gorson, um, who's not feeling well right now and has had to resign and has dedicated more than 20 years of her life in making sure this library is built and she was at the groundbreaking and uh, I think she has better things to do with her time right now than listen to this show so I'm sure she's not hearing me but uh, I, I can't say enough good things about her and what she's done for us. Uh, I think the library design committee needs to stay in place for another 12 or 18 months because there'll be a lot of decisions to be made and one of the decisions that this uh, council needs to make is I am your representative on the design committee and in two weeks when I leave this council you need to decide whether I need to stay there or I need to say goodbye to that committee as well along with the other eight committees that I'm on. <laughs> Jacques you had something? So in that regard you're, you're also going to be leaving the area too? Uh, not for a couple of years. Oh, but you're traveling I thought so. In, in a couple of years. I'll, I'll keep well, you I'll keep you years. personally posted on that. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm sorry for bringing it up. I, I That's all right. <laughs> I thought you were on your way to Louisiana or wherever. Oh, okay. it points yeah, unknown. Points unknown. <laughs> points unknown. Anything? Uh, no questions. Yeah. No, you stay. Anyone from the public like to address us? Seeing none. I'll move the resolution to ad move it to adopt the resolution that's attached that dissolves the library advisory committee. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? There we go. Moving on to cannabis. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, this last item before you is consideration of a uh, cannabis application fee. So as you recall, on July 26th, the Council took two actions. The first was adopting Ordinance 1021, amending the Municipal Code and adding uh, oh retail boy. cannabis licenses. The second was adopting a resolution 4122, establishing November 6th as a elect the date for an election to consider a cannabis tax, business tax. And the uh, um, Ordinance would only go into effect with successful, uh, with the approval of the cannabis business tax. So the cannabis business tax was measure I on the ballot and as of today is passing at 75% unofficial vote count. 
and that will establish a uh, cannabis business tax not to exceed 7%. Additionally, um, we amended the municipal code adding chapter 5.36030, which defines the application process and calls for an application fee. So staff anticipates opening the application period the first week of January and then holding that, uh, accepting applications for about 90 to 120 days. Once the application period closes, staff will review the applications as well as establish a review panel to conduct the competitive merit-based review of all the applications we receive. We estimate the staff time at about eight hours per application and an estimated cost of around $1,600. And that fee is also consistent with what the city of Santa Cruz is currently charging. Once uh, we get through that process, we'll approve no more than two um, of the applicants and they'll have six months to obtain their land use permits and state license approvals. And then um, once, uh, you know, anticipating that two of those applicants get all of that stuff in place, then they'll be eligible to get the retail cannabis license. And we anticipate being back before council in early next year to establish a cannabis license fee. So recommended action is to conduct the public hearing that we noticed for the retail cannabis application fee and amending the fiscal year 2018-19 fee schedule and to adopt the proposed resolution repealing Resolution number 4119 and establishing an amended fiscal year 1819 fee schedule that includes the retail cannabis application fee as well as the revised recreation fees that we heard earlier today. And with that, I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Chief, would you uh, come forward just in case some of the questions fall to you? Uh, Council, any questions of staff? Uh, did you happen to look at any other jurisdictions and see what their fees are for um, permit application? The, we looked at the county of Santa Cruz, and theirs is uh, 1500 but they did theirs about a year and a half to two years ago, and they haven't opened that up, so they haven't inflated it at all. City of Santa Cruz established theirs at 1500 and they've bumped it up twice, and they're at 1597 right now. And I've talked to both agencies on, on what their process was, about how much time they spend on each application. Those were the did two. Did you look into City of Watsonville? Uh, I did not. No. I happened to look in the City of Watsonville, and it was curious. Was their uh, fee is thirty two hundred dollars, and then they have a second ranking for three thousand and a final selection an additional twenty nine hundred. So they estimate that there, it looks like almost nine thousand dollars to go through the application process. And my concern is, is this just an inflated? number or does it act my concern about is are we actually capturing all the time that it takes yeah to there's to th I met with the chief and as well as with community development director and we actually have a breakdown of the time for each position that we think is going to be you know how much time involved for the chief the police captain um, some of the community development and we broke that down by staff member and the amount of time as well as the different phases that we have to go through the application because we have a defined process of what we're reviewing and what we're looking right. for. I'll, I'll have more comments after we open up for the public. Sure. Yeah, just thank you for that. Uh, I have a question. If if each applicant, let's say we get 15 applicants and they're all paying this fee, um, once we pick the two, the other applicants have spent the fee just to apply, correct? I mean, it's not like they get that back. Correct. This is the fees are, um, designed for cost recovery, so this is right. estimated cost that we'll have to review those applications. So Good. we will spend that time, whether they're approved or not. Other questions? Council? Chief, I have a question for you, a couple actually. Um, do, you feel, do you feel confident about this process and have you discussed this with our other chiefs to see what the mechanism is and how it works and how it all flushes out? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the council, a couple of questions there. I, have, uh, I am comfortable with this process. I'm meeting with uh, city manager, with Jim, as he's mentioned, another uh, uh, department heads here in the city. I think it's consistent. The process is consistent with other cities that I've explored and done some research with who are uh, uh, working through the process of retail sales of cannabis as opposed to retail sales, cultivation, lab businesses, and all the others. Their, their process is quite uh, lengthy and a little bit more expensive on the application side than ours would be. This is consistent with uh, some of the others. I have met with uh, Chief Mills from Santa Cruz City. Uh, I've met with the undersheriff with the county of Santa Cruz. Our process is very similar to theirs. 
they have a few more uh, opportunities in those areas than we might here in Capitola. So theirs is a little bit more lengthy, but the process itself is very consistent. And just for um, the knowledge of everyone sitting in our vast audience here tonight, um, CDV, CBD is considered a cannabis product? CBD is also known as hemp oil. Uh, it does not include THC or the hallucinogenic uh, ingredients that uh, uh, cannabis does, uh, but it is in California illegal to sell. To sell. Um, it's legal to sell? Illegal. So even if you were a, a cannabis retailer, you can't sell CBD? You would need a local uh, a retail license to sell CBD hemp oil just as you would to sell marijuana. So it falls under the same category as any other cannabis product in Capitola? CBD is not cannabis. Okay. It does fall under the both the uh, restrictions within Prop 64 and the allowances within Prop 64. Okay. In other words, um, if we had a retail store in Capitola, they would be able to sell CBD? If they were properly licensed, yes. Right. Uh, but you couldn't sell CBD outside of a licensed cannabis retailer? You can possess it, you can provide it, but uh, my understanding at the state level and the local level in California, the municipalities, is that you need a, a proper license to sell CBD. Good. Um, I just wanted to establish that make sure. Any other questions of the chief? I'll open it up to the public. Come on up if you want to speak. You have to speak at the podium. Come on up. We got to drag you back up into the spotlight again. Uh, Welcome again. Thank you. This, I know, no worries. This is uh, timely that I'm sitting here. I didn't even know we were going to be speaking about this, which is interesting. Uh, but I trust that everything is perfect. So my question is, as I mentioned earlier, um, Devin is planning to carry our CBD products inside of his store. So from I have a business in CBD and we've been selling all over California for the last year now and have not been approached at all in terms of, you know, are we legal? We, we f to our knowledge right now with the attorneys that we've spoken to uh, are completely uh, allowed to sell. We sell on the street, just uh, markets and different places. And so I'd love to really know what the the that the legalities are because obviously I don't want to get Devin in trouble nor do we want to be in trouble but we also at the same time want to help people heal because that's what we're doing right now I'll, I will leave you to have your people talk with our people and uh, work out the, the legalities of it I want to keep you on the right side of the law for sure awesome good well, thank you thank you hmm. council I just have a couple of the comments. I, I, we uh, discussed uh, events a couple meetings ago about the, the, the events that we have in the village and the fees associated with that. And I'm just concerned that, that sometimes we undersell what we do in this town. And, I, and I, I appreciate the effort that was made to come up with the cost analysis. I just wonder if there's some cost in there that, you know, sometimes we don't charge certain things. I mean, this seems like a lot of man hours. And then there's some intangible things that we don't charge. And there's always costs associated, you know, whether it's office space or time, and, and, and they're not incorporated into the fees. And I, I, like I said, I the efforts in Santa Cruz, like I said, there's just 1596, the county's 1500, but I don't know why Watsonville has this, you know, nine thousand dollar fee. They have a budget problem. <laughs> well, <laughs> sure, Steph, I, I get that. I just, I, I think what I, my only concern is, I just want to make sure we're charging an appropriate fee. And I think we just went through on the junior guards where we just put in some increases that weren't there. And, um, you know, as, as the finance director mentioned, Santa Cruz hasn't upgraded theirs and they might come back. And I know you feel like this is commensurate with what the city of Santa Cruz is doing. I just, as long as we're doing it and we're not losing money by doing something, then, then I don't have a problem with it. So a couple things that I think might help allay your concerns a little bit. First is, is the, the, the fully burdened cost rate that you see up there, that is, that includes all overhead. So it includes rent, utilities, everything okay. else. The chief of police does not make $220 an hour, um, much to his chagrin, I'm sure. <laughs> um, so, so those overhead costs are incorporated. The other thing I would, you know, I I if it helps you a little bit, this is essentially a one-time cost. We're going to be opening up this process. Hopefully we get 15, 20 great different 
businesses, business operators who are making proposals to make a, have a business here in town. We're going to rank them, we're going to score them, and we're going to give the top two the opportunity to open a shop here in Capitola, and hopefully they're going to be successful operators here in Capitola for the next 20 or 30 years. So this isn't going to be like the junior guards where every year we're, we're you know, you want to be right on because those costs have to pay for all the instructors. This is sort of a one-time process. Uh, and at the end of the day, the 7% tax on a five to $10 million a year business um, is really orders of magnitude different from what this initial application sure. fee. So we looked at it. Uh, I'll tell you, we didn't do, you know, we evaluated what re other costs were at other local jurisdictions. We looked at what we thought our costs were going to probably be, and we came up with what our best estimate was. But I don't think this is going to be one of these ongoing things where it's like fence permits or tree permits that we're issuing each and every day for now until um, the end of time. Okay, great. Thanks for that explanation. Council members, anything else? Is there a motion? I wonder if I can. I'm oh, pl Mr. please do. Uh, and I am going to work with the gentleman, the public speaker, to Good. try and determine the legality of the CBD question. But I'm going to read you legal language that I'm basing my, what is only an opinion. It's not legal uh, direction or anything else. But California bans hemp-derived CBD oil on July 6th. Uh, the California Department of Public Health issued a memo making it clear that CBD oil derived from hemp was banned in the state. The memo asserts that CBD oil derived from hemp is not under the purview of the state's cannabis regulations, which is important because Prop 64 governs cannabis. CBD and cannabis are different items. That, I that is the basis for my opinion that within a municipality, you would likely need a license from the local municipality, local control. Whether or not the Bureau of Cannabis Control, cannabis control in California has rendered a different opinion between July 6th and today, I have no idea except to su suggest that many laws have gone forward, many laws are being pushed forward through the state level, there are going to be more changes, this might be one, but I'm basing my opinion on, on the legal documentation that I, that I uh, pulled together. And I know from uh, secondhand experience that uh, they, are, they do sell CBD at other cannabis retailers around the county. They do. So I don't know where that's falling between the cracks. Ed? Just to clarify, so it would be your opinion that if someone had a, a cannabis license, if we issued someone a cannabis license down, that they would also be able to sell CBD. But barring that license, they would not be able to sell the product at this time. Based upon my research that's right. being provided to local municipalities and law enforcement, yes. Okay, sure. Stephanie? I'll move the uh, recommended action to adopt the proposed resolution Repealing resolution number 4119 and establishing an amended fiscal year 2018-2019 fee schedule, including the new retail cannabis application fee and revised recreation fees. I'll second that. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That brings us to the end. And Mr. Treasurer, my apologies. I never looked to you for comments tonight. Did you have anything to tell us? Um. Let me just say that uh, it's been a pleasure working with, with you and Stephanie. I know you're, you're about to leave, and uh, it's been very educational. I've learned a lot about government, and I've learned a lot about the proper way to handle an official position from watching you two. Thank you. Thank you. And that brings our meeting to a close, and we're uh, embarking on Thanksgiving, which is why this meeting is on Tuesday and not the day after tomorrow. Uh, if you have a, a joyful Thanksgiving every year, carry on. If you have a dysfunctional one, uh, make an effort to not make it so. And like, like we like to say in Capitola, remember where you are, remember where you live, be nice to each other. Good night, Capitola. <laughs>